All right, Mark, thanks for joining me. Uh, my name is Corey. You guys have probably seen some of the write-ups that I've been doing about direct consumer businesses. Uh, I'm looking to have some conversations with uh, domain experts and uh, talk about some of the businesses that I've been covering. Today, I'm talking with uh, Mark Gutman. Mark is from Wild Story. Um, Mark, can you give me a little bit of a, a, a background, who you are, what Wild Story is? And I'll, uh, I'm going to share my screen and, and show your website as well. Yeah, absolutely. And Corey, it's, uh, I'm, I'm so excited for this combo. We're going to have a really good time. But uh, my name is Mark Gutman. Uh, Corey is now showing uh, his screen. Uh, my, my studio is Wild Story. Uh, we're a brand strategy and design shop. Uh, and, and we work with, you know, on our website, it says arts and recreation industries, and that's part of our positioning. But we really work with all sorts of companies and typically a lot of outdoor brands, but all sorts of other brands as well. Actually, right after this call, I'm working with another creative agency to to help brand them. And my uh, domain expertise is in brand and brand strategy and, and design. And so uh, really excited to talk about uh, Black. What does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis for you? Like what are the projects you're working on? What are you doing for some of these uh, these different brands? Yeah, it, it, that's a great question. So really brand strategy has a different look depending on where you are in your, your business life cycle. For example, if you're just getting started uh, you have an idea for a business like many people uh, in the trends group or something like that have, um, you know, brand strategy can be really helpful in understanding who's your target customer, what's going to make you different from a competitive standpoint. But at the same time, if you have an idea, I, I urge people get get in and, and, and start your business and see if it even uh, it even has legs and you can even turn a profit. Uh, then we typically work with a lot of businesses that have grown, I like to say, uh, in spite of themselves or in spite of a strong founder. Uh, and as they start to grow and scale, uh, we start to work with businesses on uh, their internal brand, which is like mission, vision, values, purpose, uh, what makes them different. Uh, who are their customers, um, what's their personality, um, key messaging and messaging framework, um, visual identity. So then how do we communicate that both with words and visuals? And then we go out and, you know, that's all the fun stuff. That's when you typically start a business and you're super stoked because you get a new logo or a new hat and you run out of the room and you're like, whoa, we got a purpose, all this great <laughs> stuff, you know, but then the reality sets in, you got to actually build a business and, um, and start, you know, the brand storytelling and telling your story over and over again. And that's one of the things I'm really excited to talk about today with Black. Do you have any ways that you're able to like quantify the work? I mean, it, 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 that, I think that might be a little bit of a tough question, but um, I mean, all comes down to revenue, but there's a lot of inputs that maybe aren't directly tied to revenue. I think branding is maybe one of those things that you can't see the direct relation to off the bat, but probably in the long run, you can see the value of a brand and what that brand does. Uh, does that make sense? Absolutely. Well, if you're new, if you're new to world business, right, just getting in business and having an identity that separates you from your competition is a great metric. Uh, you know, you, you have to get going. You do have to have a presence. Uh, you have to um, be able to communicate. And as you know, especially in a lot of the direct to consumer brands that you work with, you have to have a social presence. So having that foundation and, and getting into business and knowing what to say and how to resonate and differentiate yourself from your competition is one. Second is a lot of, you know, a lot of businesses that come to us, you know, their key problem is they're not driving the revenue that they want to drive. They're either not attracting the right customers. They're not being perceived. They want to be perceived. A lot of times that shows up and people say like, I need a new logo or I need a new website or I need help with my social media. And as we dig into that and uncover that it's like well why 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 and it's well because we're not driving enough business we're not meeting our business goals and so we can work backwards from those and it could be repeat purchases um it can be um just depending on on the business it can be you know straight up business growth it could be uh you know customer retention if, if, if it's a membership based um uh, business and things like that. So we can we can work backwards and look at all those types of metrics based on our work to, to quantify and, and make sure that uh, we are delivering real value. Because what I will say is, you know, there's a real misnomer um, still today that branding is all about logos and, and design and all this pretty stuff. But, you know, for us and, and for me, I'm, I want to be very clear, branding is about selling. And it's about it, it, building. I mean, kind of the name of your brand, well, story. It's all about storytelling, correct? Hmm. It is, but in the sake of selling things, right? It's not wildstory.org. Wild 
uh, we are wildstory.com. And so just like most of our, our, our clients that we work with, it is about selling, driving revenue, but we've moved and, you know, and I think you see this a lot, probably, and I'd love to get your take on this in your direct to consumer and in your e-com work that you can only be transactional for so long. Right. And, um, and, and, and then it starts to have diminishing returns. It runs what, thin quickly. Right. And what brands are really seeing is that if you build a community, not just an audience, but a community, if you build what, you know, the founder of black rifle coffee refers to in his brand video as a tribe, and, and they do such a great job of this, um, you're going to have loyalty, repeat purchases. And we all know it's so hard to get new customers sometimes, but it's so easy to sell back into our base. And so uh, almost and, and any the problem business. Is, when you're doing some of that building, I, I know from my perspective is it's hard not to see the immediate return. It's almost like SEO a little bit where the, it's so, you just want to get that transaction. You want to see that revenue. And you're doing some of the cheap things that don't help you long term. But if you're building that community, you may not see the results from that community initially. But two, three years down the road, it's it, it, invaluable to have that community. Hundred percent. It's so hard, right? Because the old model, which I think that we are all ingrained in, was focus on providing shareholder returns. Shareholder doesn't have to be a huge company. It could be a single person with an e-com business, meaning I got to get, I got to sell something to someone else to get money and maximize my returns. But the problem with that is, as you, as you mentioned, it has just, it's just diminishing returns. It's just a short-term strategy. And it's, and it, it's our nature to do that, especially when we're a young business and we're struggling, right? I mean, I, I, I don't want to sit here and like, you know, act like I'm standing on a pedestal and say, you should do all these purpose-driven things, all these brand building things. If you're just trying to make a living, make a living, do what you have to do, sell stuff. But once you get past that first hurdle and you want to start to sustain a business, you're, it's got to be about more than just um, a, a transaction for the shareholder. It actually has to be a transaction that benefits the stakeholder. And what I mean by that is you have multiple stakeholders in any business. You have employee, you have the owners, you have, you have the employees, you have the customers, like what kind of value are you providing that customer? You know, and that's really what it comes down to and thinking about how am I providing them value, not just exchanging uh, something transactional. And then lastly, your community, right? Like what is that community benefit that you're putting in there? And, and some of that stuff has real echoes of uh, the conscious capitalism movement. And, and I've kind of been looking into that a lot more too, but that's, that's where we're at. That's where the world has evolved. And, um, you know, I, I challenge anyone listening to this and I, and I challenge you, Corey, to think about your own purchasing behavior, you know, and a lot of times there has to be something, once that brand meets your minimum requirements for that category, there has to be something more. There has to be something either that resonates with you from an identity perspective, which makes you say, I am a athlete. I am a sweet golfer. I am a like a bad birdie, right? I'm a hip, cool, young golfer. I'm yeah. not like all those old dudes, uh, you know, in the Tommy Millar stuff, so, or Peter Millar uh, stuff. So, um, you know, we, we were just, we're, it's happened. It's not happening. Uh, I was about to say we're on the precipice, but we're in the middle of this radical movement in the way that we consume and we buy. And, you know, that's kind of a long answer to your, to your question, but that's it's kind of, I mean, I know we're not going to talk about, we're going to talk about black raffle coffee, but it's almost a little bit like all birds in their mission that they have a whole purpose to what they're doing. It's not just to sell shoes or comfortable shoes. It's sustainability. It, 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 it's how they source their materials, how it's made. Um, and they're building a community uh, that are on board with that as well. Yeah. I mean, I mean, two, two comments there, right? Like we are living in what I call the age of ubiquity. So Allbirds is a great example. They are shoes. I can go to almost any place. I can go to a disc. I can go to like, you know, Payless shoes. I can go to, you know, Nordstrom's. I can go everywhere in between high end, low end, mid. Like, they're just shoes and they're not that like different than anybody else's shoes. And yeah, they're soft and wool, but other people are doing that kind of stuff too. And so th that's where we're at with almost every single product. Uh, even if you're new on the market, you have a limited amount of time to uh, really 
own that space before someone catches up because you can go to Alibaba, you can go anywhere, right? You can knock off anything, you can reverse engineer anything. And so the very first thing even we do in a brand strategy process is we start with that purpose. We start with helping a company identify what is it that they're doing beyond um, turning a profit. Because look, we all want to turn a profit. Profit's not bad. And you know, I want to be very clear. But we, we we work on that, and we help them identify their purpose, so that we can continue to build on that, ladder up, and know what we're going to do. Because also, brand strategy really becomes a bit of your business strategy, and, and helps you to make decisions, uh, what to say yes to, what to say no to, that type of thing. Yeah, and I had a quote in one of my first write-ups for Black Rifle Coffee, where it's like, do you sell pillows or do you sell a good night's sleep? And you're selling them more than what the product is. You're selling them a feeling. You're, you're selling them a, 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 a result sometimes. Um, and that's what's interesting to me about Black Rifle Coffee, and I guess we'll get into it, is that <clears throat> coffee's coffee. It, it, I'm not a coffee drinker, but there are 5 million average monthly searches for coffee. And how do you differentiate yourself in that industry? Um, and I think Black Rifle Coffee has done a tremendous job of doing that. Um, and I would like to just off the bat, just get your first initial opinion from your perspective on Black Rifle Coffee, what they do, who they are. What's your first thoughts when you came across Black Rifle Coffee? Yeah, so I am a coffee drinker. Everyone I know is a coffee drinker. Effectively, yeah, I'm weird like that. I just chose not to. <laughs> effectively, in my world, coffee is a commodity, right? And so I love this example. This is so good. Um, and I don't drink Black Rifle coffee. And actually, the first time I, I was thinking about this prior to our, our call, the first time that I even saw Black Rifle coffee, it must have been a few years ago. I saw something on YouTube where they had this giant, like, you know, massive artillery gun and yep. they're shooting something. And I was like, I, I kind of laughed at it. I was like, ha, ha, ha. Like, these guys are over the top, like, whatever. In preparation for this call, I've been doing a touch, touch of, of digging and I'm not laughing, right? Like I am like fully um, bought in and, and love this brand. And my, 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 first, my first reaction is the reason they are doing so well is because they have an extremely strong brand. And we can go through it piece by piece, um, but they are doing just about everything right. Uh, and and that's, the, that's the headline right there. And for me, what first struck me uh, as unique about them if you take a look let me see if i can get real quick to their about page and their staff they are not a coffee company they are essentially a production company that so happens to sell coffee and i don't want to discount what they're doing but if you look at who their staff is they have an editor-in-chief they have an executive producer they have a vp of people and culture where's their brewer where's the director of e-commerce here they, that, that's not their typical structure here they, they, have, they have a focus on creating the content in the videos. And I think that's what sells their brand uh, is the efforts that they're putting into the content. 100%. Now, so, you know, in, in branding, like everyone has their own process. Mine, mine is, you know, we, we start off with the strategy. We call that, you know, here you, you want to differentiate. And then step two is you get into the um, identity portion. So that's a lot of uh, visual identity, whether that be a logo, look and feel, all this type of stuff. Um, also words, things like manifestos, maybe a foundational brand video, things like that. And then step three is the is the uh, telling, right? And you want to go out and, and start telling that story. And so one of the things I do want to talk about, and I have a bunch of notes here, but yes, they have become a platform. They have become a publisher. And one of the things I tell every single client is once you get up and running, once you figure out that you have a place in the market, once you are selling, you need to figure out what value you offer your audience, your community, your tribe beyond your products and services. Because you can only buy so much coffee, right? I can only wake up about every two to three weeks and say, I need to buy coffee. As a matter of fact, if I'm on a subscription of Black Rifle Coffee, I'm not even doing that because my mind's turned off. It's just showing up when I'm drinking coffee. So what Black Rifle Coffee has done that's so genius and, and just right on point is that they have figured out how to offer value 
beyond their products and services. They do it in their blog. You're absolutely right. They're a publisher of platform. They have all these great topics. They focus on military stories. They focus on uh, what's going on in the world. They have some feel good stories. Then they have their YouTube channel where they're just crushing it. They have like comedy, uh, they uh, comedic videos. They have some serious brand videos. Um, they really lean into this idea of it's who we are, right? And you've got coffee, the flag, and a, and a military pistol. I mean, the number one thing I, I take away is like nowhere in this content are they selling how good their coffee is. Hey, these are the premium be green, uh, beans. This is how we make it. This is why it's the best coffee. It, I don't see that anywhere in their content at all. No one cares. No. You're, right? you're, again, you're selling them a feeling more than you're selling them a product. But all that, right? how they know how to show up here, how they show up here consistently, which is so important in your brand storytelling is to be telling sort of the same stories in a different way, the same themes over and over again. Like we know exactly who Black Rifle Coffee is and it's not by accident, right? Like this is not scattershot. This isn't random. It's all based on a super, super strong brand platform that they can then refer to and use as the lens that they tell these stories and, and, and create this content over and over again. And, you know, what I can do if you want really quickly, you let me share, I can share something with you. So let's see here. I have stopped sharing. Let me see if it uh, will allow it to share for you. It says you've disabled it, but Hold on. Maybe, maybe you can do it on the fly. So I have all participants can share. Oh, we're good now. Perfect. Okay, just give me a second to get this going. Great. So if you want to look really quickly at what a brand platform might look like, we've got up top here, what we call the complete brand, but we're going to like start at the bottom and we're going to ladder up and you start with your, what we would call like your brand DNA, your brand soul, which is your purpose, vision, your mission, your values, right? And that's in here. And then the next, what I would argue is one of the most important areas to focus on is your audience, who's your customer, what are your competitors doing, and then how are you different? So we really think of that as the core of your brand strategy. I would also argue actually that your personality and voice falls into this, this section. And then we get into, well, how do we express that brand? How do we talk about our brand? Well, we need some messaging frameworks, you know, uh, Black Rifle Coffee does a great job. We're veteran owned. We're, we're on a mission to employ 10,000 veterans. We walk the walk. We don't walk the talk. I mean, one of the things I love about their brand is that they are so like transparent. Um, the owner, and I don't know if you had a chance to watch the brand video on their about us page, but I think that five minute video says it all. And, you know, and he's like, look, I'm going to tell you the way it is. Like, like war, I, I loved war and I hated war. It was the high of highs and the lowest of lows. And like, you know- There's authenticity, it, which yeah. I think is key. You, you need that authenticity to build the brand. Yeah, and, and how do you get authentic? You're, you're also vulnerable, right? He, he knew he was gonna say, he said some things that were on the edge a little bit and he was probably gonna, you know, get in trouble. Name, tagline, and hooks, it's who we are, right? So this idea of like, it's who we are, we're unapologetic. That's their tagline uh, that they, they go with on a, a lot of stuff. And then you have your whole brand identity system and your brand presence. So brand presence being YouTube, stuff like that. Your identity. So you'll see like how insignificant or how minor in terms of all this stuff, your actual identity, your actual logo, your look and your feel. It's just one component and it's all influenced by all these items. So this is like a what I'm talking about when I say it's your business strategy, like who is your audience and your competitors? And so when you think about uh, things like their competitors, like Starbucks. Yes, right? they've gone Star directly after Starbucks. 
Right. And Starbucks is like kind of your everyday suburban shopping mall, even in the, the city. It's like the safe place to go. It's like your middle of your road. It's not your Brooklyn hipster coffee shop. Right. And, and, and Black Rifle Coffee is like the anti hipsters. Right. Like they are the, you know, and I love it. Everyone looks like a special forces operator. They've all got like tat, you know, uh, tattoo sleeves going and beards. And they just like, you know, they they really are who they are. But when you start to think and you start to maybe plot out or map, which we do a lot of times in branding, um, a, a market. And on one axis, you might have hipster. And on the other, you might have like hardcore military operator. Right. And you can start to think, wow, there's all these coffee shops like that I can think of in Brooklyn or Portland or even in Denver where I live. Um, there are these total hipsters, you know, in the middle, you know, Starbucks is kind of operating in that middle of the road. You know, they're, they're kind of just appealing to everybody. Um, you get good coffee and then you could probably have quality of coffee on the other axis or something, right. And kind of start to figure that out and move, move around and find your, your white space. But uh, Black Rifle Coffee, what they're doing, we have, we know nothing about their coffee. I don't no, know my opinion taste. is that they could sell anything. They just so happen to sell coffee. Like they, they could pick a different product and have the same exact branding, same exact methodology of the way they go about it and, ha- and it be, I, I don't know, a, a hydration snack or a, some sort of apparel. I feel like they could sell any product inside of that, this, the, the brand that they have built. I would agree with the one caveat is only if that thing that they were selling was meaningful to them, right? Yes. So what you can tell is that they really care about coffee. The, the whole origin story of, making French press coffee while like, you know, while deployed and in combat and how coffee was so important in this foundational um, part of, of the founder's experience. Now, look, I do storytelling. I also pick and choose which stories I tell people. I'm sure there's some editor, <laughs> editorial license there and some storytelling, but it really, really works. And it doesn't matter if it's, if it's massaged or groomed, it's a great story. And it's one that helps connect the military theme to the business. And I think that that's really, really important. And do we know all these things when we buy Black Rifle coffee? No, you and I, we're digging, we're looking for all this stuff, Yes, but it's felt. And I do believe it matters. And it's also brought, it's also consumed and absorbed by consumers at different times and in different ways. And so if you're really clear on all this stuff, this becomes the foundation of every message you send, of every touch point, of everything you do, right? And what I want to do is I want to show you something else. So they know so clearly who their customers are. And what I like about this, I want to see if I can find it. No. Great. I found it. Just give me a second to resize my window. So they know that their customer is military focused, an everyman, a real person. They're not this fancy Starbucks or hipster person. So even I noticed here on their subscription, who are you ordering for? The home. Look at this image of the home that they chose. Small, American flag. It's like the old colonial type image of a house, I would think. Like the Civil War, that's what I would think of a house. But not like a McMansion, not like even like a four person home. Like this just quaint, this is very intentional, right? Like, hey, this is for the salt of the earth. This is for the the office one, which you're going to get to is even more clear. Right. Right. That's not a water cooler. That's not a computer. That's a a hard hat. That's a hard hat. That's for the construct. This, this brand's for the every man, for the construction worker, for the, the fabric of our, of our, you know, country for the military, for the first responder, for the person who's building this country, right? People that believe in Americana and 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 are the fabric of our. Do you think the CEO is the one that's driving these? These are, in my opinion, minor design decisions, or do you think it's just the culture that he built? So the people that he installed knew to put those in, and then and they they just have such a good solid brand that everyone that's inside the company already knew what they should have been. Or do you think there's one individual person that's driving these decisions that you just highlighted here? Yep. Now, if we were to guess, which we are doing, we're speculating. My guess is that the CEO understands the value of brand at the very least. And that he's very clear on that. He probably has somebody 
um, who, and, and, and do we have in the um, about section, do we have in the people, is there, is there someone who is focused on brand? Let's see here, partnerships. So Molly here, uh, the VP of VP marketing, marketing, probably heading that up. My guess though, just knowing how this whole brand is presenting itself, where they're putting all their money, which you, which you mentioned into content, that Evan is very brand savvy and he knows the value of brand. Now, to what extent, who knows? I mean, this isn't, you know, to, to, to know the value of brand um, isn't like you don't have to go to school. You just have to, to recognize that. I would suggest that they have done some brand work, that they probably have a very strong brand platform. For a company like this, that brand platform usually shows up in a some sort of guide or a toolkit. Um, we call it a style guide, brand book, brand guide. And it'll say, our customer is the everyman, the hard worker, the construction worker, the military vet, right? We are not talking to uh, the CEOs of billion dollar companies. We are not talking to doctors. We are not talking to you know, people that drive Teslas like me, right? We're talking to people that have Ford F-150s. We're talking to people that have served in the military that want to support the military. We're talking to first responders and we're talking to people that like to shoot guns. Look at Matt Best. Look at that. Yeah, photo. he epitomizes that. Yeah, look at that photo. And so I'm, I'm, a great I'm, guessing, photo. I'm guessing Matt was some sort of badass special ops operator. If not, he, he certainly could play one on TV. But so, you know, to, to answer your question, I believe that they've done a ton of brand, brand work. This is very intentional. I don't think it's unintentional. So when you do this right, you can hand that brand guide, you can hand that brand work to your, because it's documented, right? It's, it's very clear. And you can hand that to your VP of marketing. And then Molly can hand that to her uh, people working under her. Uh, she can hand that to her uh, partner agency, like say they were working with us, we could get that. And, and then we know very clearly, Logan knows, right? If you go, if you think back to that matrix I showed you, Logan knows as editor in chief, what are the key messages? What are the key themes? From there, he has the license probably to have creativity and to build his own content calendar as long as he stays within the, the brand platform and the key messages. And that's really what brand is. Brand is strategy, marketing is ex execution. They're, they're intrinsically linked. They're not, they're not at odds. Branding supports that, right? And you know, if anyone's ever sat there and said, you know, wanted to create content and they're like, well, what do I talk about? What do I say? Well, it's because it's, it's, you're, not, you're not clear probably on some of these these brand tenants, like who's your competitor, what are your key messages, what makes you different? These guys know that their coffee doesn't make them different. Right. Right, but Evan knows that it's his, his experience, his worldview, his values that makes him different. And no one's doing this. There's no one's being a, uh, up until this point, no one was being a badass, warrior archetype coffee company coffee was about like relaxation and you know exploring distant lands and you know uh elevated food and you know coffee tasting like wine and fancy brewing methods all this crap right um and 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 they just they they, they you know i, I think it's 100 percent authentic so i'm not like criticizing them but they saw an opportunity um, and they were able to do it. What I will say really quickly is that Evan says in his video, like, you know, if you think about this, he didn't sit down and start like sketching out, how do I make money? He started roasting beans and giving them to his friends. And then that turned into a business that had real value to his customers because he was roasting beans, doing a, you know, a, a good job. And then, you know, probably no one was talking to this, this demographic. No, it's probably no one was talking to his friends of, military veterans and operators and, and, and stuff like that. Everyone was talking to the soccer moms in the suburbs. So, um, you know, I, I think that we, we, let's not discount that Evan loves coffee, that he was, you know, that he was involved with coffee prior to starting this business and that he um, was actually actively roasting and had built a business out of his kitchen and then had to elevate up. He didn't just say like, how do I make money? coffee, military, let's go. Yeah. So I've broken down the numbers for their direct consumer business. They obviously have retail locations. As I said, they're starting to try to go after Starbucks and, and have more of those brick and mortar locations. But 
in July, I was able to estimate they did $7.9 million to their website. In August, I estimate they did about $8.2 million. So still growing there. Obviously, a, a very large company, nearly a $100 million run rate through their direct consumer channel here. If a brand similar to uh, Black Rifle Coffee came to you, but they were much smaller, say they were doing 50000 or $20,000 a, a, a month in revenue, and they wanted to grow and in, in, in like, hey, we're passionate about we're, we're passionate about the, uh, the veterans, we're a veteran-owned company, we're passionate about brewing coffee, what direction would you go? Now, obviously, we have a playbook of what they did, but where would you start a smaller brand, and what should they be working on to really build up that brand like Black Bar Rifle Coffee has done? Yeah, there, there's two things that I always do. Um, you know, we take them through that branding process, and that, that process is a process of discovery right? We don't know where we're going to end up when we start that process. And so what I, what I shared with you on my screen, that, that is the process. We hit all those beats, but I, I really do think, you know, the very first thing you can call it your brand DNA, your brand substance, your brand soul. It's all those things. It's your, your purpose, your beliefs, your vision, your value, but it's like, like, who are you? Like, what makes you special? What is your worldview? What do you care about? Because no one else can replicate that. And so, you know, that's what I'll tell any, any brand. And, and it's also like, you know, this, this, as you know, this, this business stuff, it's just hard. Like, yeah, we have some wins, but like, there's a lot of like tough days and like, what's going to get you through. It's not like choosing to be something you're not right. And so really leaning into who you are, then what I like to do really is I like, you know, I think the other most effective thing you can do is map your category and really understand where you have opportunity, right? So if Evan came out of the military and he's like, look, I love traveling the world and, you know, and, and I'm into literature and, you know, and, and he's starting to overlap and you, you start to look at like what their brand positioning is. And he's like, and it's like very similar to Starbucks, like you're going to be in trouble, right? Like there's, you need to be different and you need to stand out. Now by being different, I don't mean you need to be wacky or odd, but you need to own a space that someone else isn't playing in. And, you know, if I ask you and probably 20 other people to describe Black Rifle Coffee in one word, what would you say? America. Great. The, the so I bet you there's America. five words we'd use. I don't know. You know, we'd say America, say military, we'd say veteran, right? But we'd all like say the same five words, right? right. And that's and then and that's very clear what space they own. It's defensible. No one else owns it the way they do. And so you know, for for a, for a company doing you know twenty grand in revenue, it's about time to start thinking about that stuff if you want to stay valid now, um, and if you want to grow. Right. You might be able to maintain 20 grand in revenue at being a copycat business. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. But look, hundred million dollar direct to consumer business in coffee, which is a commodity. I mean, their average order value, I estimate, is around twenty two dollars. So, I mean, which I mean, just the sheer volume they're, they're pushing through is insane, which is a commodity. Have you ever gone to the coffee aisle in the market? Right. Like, I mean. It's, 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 it's blinding how many brands there are. And you're, you're, you're going up against major brands that have shelf space like Starbucks, like Pete's Coffee that I can think of. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think of all the ones like when I go down to the, to the supermarket, all these other direct-to-consumer brands, right? And they've carved out a massive niche, a hugely successful business. And, and that's what you need to do if you really want to grow. And, and, and that's no mistake, right? They, they could have been a copycat coffee company and they could have had like a nice little business and, and, and found ways to sell, whether like through really good advertising or geographic location, if they were a physical store or whatever. But you don't get to be a $100 million company unless you resonate, unless you're relevant, unless you're very clear on who you are and unless you're different. And so um, these are things that we want to be striving for. And look, it is about evolution. I don't think Evan, you know, day one probably had this all figured out, you know. No. How would you, or what methods do you recommend getting that messaging out? So, I mean, uh, it, this is in Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. 
you you can build your messaging, get your branding all together. How do you get that messaging out? What do you recommend? Video, blogging, uh, all the above. What what channels? What way do you get your message out to the masses? Yeah, every customer is different, but but if I were going to give a blanket recommendation, I would follow this model. Become a publisher. Do you have to become a publisher in a platform to the extent that Black Rifle did? No, but you know the conversation is happening out on social. You have these platforms that are ready-made with audiences. Now, how you do it, I definitely have preferences. Like I'm a big fan. I think that YouTube still has so much room for growth and legs, and but not everybody can create consistently on YouTube. So my first recommendation is just where can you show up consistently and create content? If that's a podcast, do that. If that's a um, Instagram, do that. But, you know, what I'd also be thinking about is over investing in content. I mean, we're a small studio, we have someone that, you know, is a content producer, that's all they do is help us create our own content. And why I'm so bullish on on video or, or a couple things. One, um, I just think YouTube's a, a, a platform that has so much legs, so much search. I mean, I don't know about you, but literally my behavior is, hey, I'm, you know, so example, I'm, I'm going to, I signed up to start running a marathon and I, I'm not running, but I need, I need stuff, right? So I need a watch. And what do I do? I, uh, you know, a smartwatch, I'm Googling smartwatches, which is leading me to reviews on YouTube. And that's the way I'm, I'm purchasing. And that's the way I'm I, agree. I, I go to YouTube often for reviews. And that's how I'm being introduced to, to that whole community. So, um, so A, it's a search engine. People are going there. People aren't typically going to Instagram searching for things to buy and things like that. But two, it's sort of like the pinnacle type of content. It holds every single format, meaning we're on video right now. We're also recording audio. As you can see, I also have my auto transcription going right now. And so it becomes this format that you can chop into 20 other pieces of content, right? I can post this on YouTube. I can even chop that into multi videos, shorter videos. Those shorter videos can become reels. Those shorter videos can be on YouTube shorts. Those can go to Instagram and, you know, you know, go to YouTube or to Instagram TV. I can then take the transcript, make, you know, take highlights out of that, turn those into tweets. I can turn those into Instagram carousels. I can also turn that into a blog. So, um, and quite frankly, you kind of need to be almost everywhere, not on every channel, but like, if you're going to be on YouTube, it's, and then we can even turn this into a podcast, right? We can upload the audio and, and, and things like that. The problem with podcasts right now is audio is not really being indexed as, as heavily as stuff on YouTube. That's the other thing too. It helps give you, give you search content. So that's why I like that. The third thing I'll say is just, you, you really want to think about where your audience is. So, you know, um, if your audience is just living on LinkedIn, get really, get really onto LinkedIn. But as you know, and I see you do this, you can, um, you, you can repurpose and republish the same content. And so you can send out an email to your list. You can put, you know, Facebook groups, right? That's how we met. We met as, as members of a private Facebook group called trends. And, uh, I reached out to you cause I loved one of your reviews and we started a relationship, right? But you are getting content exposure by by publishing there which i think for me it, i i just wanted to start writing and breaking down these companies and i essentially like i tweet some out and it's just like throwing rocks into a field like no one's reading it no one's seeing it and i was like how can i get anyone to like give me feedback on it or like see if anyone's interested in the facebook group I ended up being the best way and actually got me going i get a little traction on linkedin now and i get my email list has been building but I, I, that private facebook group is really what cause me to continue to build on what I'm doing. And it's because it's a great audience. They're interested in what you're doing. They're smart, right? And also though, what I will say, Corey, is you came from a place of giving, right? You were adding value to the group. You weren't really asking or anything like that. And, that it, and, and that's great content, right? You were adding value to my life beyond, you know, beyond anything. You weren't saying, hey, here's my coffee. Here's something I'm trying to sell you. You're like, hey, here's some info. Here's, here's, here's perspective. Here's some IP. And that was cool. And but that's that what resonated. like the Black Rifle Coffee, these are videos that like are entertaining that you want to watch. Some of them tell stories. Some of them are, I think you covered it. Some of them are, are, are covering stories of people that may have been injured in war. Uh, but other ones are just like, 
out of this world explosions and like crazy and there's humor to it and i think that's something that is key for them is that it's entertaining first it, it, it catches my attention and i want to watch it more than it's like all right here's another brand tell, like trying to sell me something yeah and if you look at their their channels uh and their playlist uh this is their content calendar right so uh like when i work with clients we we create content buckets clients are always like what am i going to talk about like let's create some content buckets literally scroll down in youtube their content buckets are it's who we are these are all these theme like right these are expose kind of um cool brand videos they do comedy videos they have veterans react they have the caffeinated life they have this uh black rifle coffee company present series these look to be more in-depth um films right at coffee or die and gear and, and then they get into coffee and gear videos and stuff like that um and, and things like that so that's literally their content calendar and then they go okay we gotta like this is how we're gonna space it out this is how we're also not gonna you know and, and that's the, the mistake that most brands make they just go like all right everyone wants to learn about coffee so we're gonna do coffee gear we're gonna do coffee roasting coffee techniques well no like and they're very smart they're they're laying it in you know and and peppering the coffee stuff um at a minimum and offering a lot of value and content and they have a huge following right yeah and that's what i've been noticing well there's some other quick stats on how they've been growing and, and since i've been tracking them you know on instagram when i started tracking them two months ago they had 1.6 million followers and now up to 1.7 million TikTok's a channel that we haven't talked about, which I'm curious what your opinions on. Uh, two months ago, they were at 370,000. Now they're at 380,000. They've gained 10,000 people in two months on that channel. Facebook, they've stayed the same. And the YouTube channel, they've grown from 819,000 to 800, sorry, yeah, 819 to 829,000 over that two month period. Um, so they have a very large audience. So these are some of the bigger brand numbers that I've seen on any of the breakdowns. Typically, a lot of brands I see are doing uh, like 50,000 followers on Instagram maybe up to 500,000, getting over a million is, is a very impressive number for a brand on Instagram. Uh, their TikTok numbers, I have my opinions on TikTok. I am curious about what your opinions are for branding on TikTok. Um, I, I guess, what, what are your opinions? Uh, you uh, know, yeah. I, I think that from a, I think TikTok's a really interesting hot channel now. That's where all the growth is. That's where you're seeing a lot of people um on TikTok, i think that's a younger demographic and i think that with all this content repurposing if you're simply repurposing TikTok, why not right it also gives you an opportunity to experiment a lot but we're seeing you know TikTok as a real viable channel um you know my fear with TikTok is it just feels like these new platforms come out and they have a life and they have like all, everyone gets really excited about them and either a one of the bigger platforms like Facebook uh, buys them or they, they fade. And so my fear is over investing in something like that. And then, you know, and, and this is the fear of any social channel. You don't really own that channel. You don't own that audience. Uh, you're at the mercy uh, like Facebook continually keeps changing the rules around advertising and, and things like that. Um, you're at the mercy of, of the platform. That being said, where else are you going to get ready-made um, ready uh, audiences? They're going to serve things up. And I do like the TikTok algorithm. And my guess is, is that they are getting a ton of exposure, Black Rifle Coffee, in particular to a younger demographic that they wouldn't have access to otherwise and introducing them to, to their brand. And so um, I think it can be really beneficial. And you know, I don't have any data that says that it's not. Yeah, for me right now, what I've seen for TikTok, it seems to be a little bit of a cheaper audience, like an easier to get eyeballs, but it's a less qualified audience. Um, and the way I also view TikTok, it's, it's a little bit more like the Pandora music app, where you're kind of telling the, the app what you want to see, but you're not really going after, like, I, I start a Led Zeppelin channel. I'm not always listening to the Led Zeppelin, but it's like, all right, I like Pink Floyd. I like all those ancillary bands. But I'm not going to go listen to Pink Floyd all the time. I'll not listen to Led Zeppelin all the time. It's the way I view TikTok a little bit, where it's like, oh, I like that content creator, but I'm not always going back to their profile and see what they're creating. I've told the algorithm I like it, feed it up to me every now and then when you're on your For You page. So I feel like it's tougher to do content partnerships on TikTok because it people aren't going back to check the profiles. It's on the algorithm to feed that back up to 
a, a user, um, but it it definitely it, it's a way to get eyeballs. And I'm curious if you're able to convert that in other ways. Like, are you able to bring them onto an email list? Are you able to get them into a remarketing funnel? Um, some of the technical stuff, but I, I think it's a, a, an inexpensive way way right now to get your brand name out there. Um, and I've been fascinated with that, and I've been trying to study it and understand it for the last year or so now. And it's even fun, right? But like anecdotally, I ask everybody on TikTok. Uh, one of my favorite questions, right, is like if I see someone on TikTok or, or Instagram, especially younger people, but like, tell me about that. Like, tell me when you use TikTok, right? And TikTok is this like mindless, I'm bored, I'm scrolling. Um, it's almost like old school TV. It's unidirectional, right? Like, yep. like I'm just going to get this broadcast and boop, 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 boop. Whereas like even Instagram and the younger kids are starting, you know, at a certain point start to transition back into Instagram because they start to use that as a communication platform, right? And they start to DM and things like that where they're less so on, on TikTok and things like that. They might like share videos and comment and stuff like that. But you know, I feel like the engagement is very fleeting on TikTok. Um, in other channels, it's a, your engagement means a little bit more, um, and you, it, there's a little more value out of it. it. Just from my perspective, we've done a lot of like influencer partnerships, and Instagram is still like there's issues with Instagram right now with their algorithm and, and how they're trying to get eyeballs on different content. But you can get a good direct response, and you you, you can get people that engage with the specific content creators on Instagram better than I've seen on TikTok. I've heard some people say they've seen some success on TikTok, but it's, it, it, we definitely struggled with it some. Sure. And like, look, people are going to have every platform. There's going to be these success stories of people having great success. I mean, you know, I'm in the, the marketing space and everyone just won't shut up about Clubhouse, right? Like everyone's on Clubhouse, <laughs> you, know, you know, how do you know someone's on Clubhouse? Wait two seconds and they'll tell you. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that platform. I mean, for me, it just becomes personally and for any brand you just have to start to make some decisions because you can't be everywhere you start to get spread thin you almost you, you only have so much bandwidth and so you have to choose those and in this process that you're going through Corey is perfect this is what brands should be asking themselves hey what does this channel do what kind of audience is it is there more engagement or less engagement how do I move engagement from this platform to my list how do I convert because remember, this is what we're here for, right? Like we are building businesses. <laughs> like, like we're not- You gotta get sales business. eventually. Yeah, we're not- Eyeballs don't pay the bills. Metrics. Yeah, exactly. You know, vanity metrics are just that, they're, they're vain. And so um, these are the questions to be asking as you start to think about your content program. Where can I be? Not every company can, is a hundred million like Black Rifle and not every company can then hire an editor in chief and a content specialist and all this, right? Like most of us were kind of scrapping it together and um, ask those questions so that you can put your resources and your energy into the best opportunities to help you grow your business. Where's your audience, right? Yeah, I agree. Um, so we've been going for a little bit now. Uh, I've covered almost everything on Black Rifle. Is there anything else that you wanted to bring up that I may have forgotten about? No, I think they're doing an amazing job, um, you know, 100 million in revenue for, you know, a product basically no one needs right now. Uh, you know, everyone wants it, but we didn't need another coffee company, right? No. And, uh, and they're doing an amazing job. And, and I think it, it, it comes from the branding, as we mentioned. I think that's why Black Rifle is the one I wanted to speak to you about, is that, as you said, it's a commodity. There's 5 million monthly searches for coffee on Google. And how do you get known? You build a brand. And I think Black Rock Coffee's done a fantastic job of that. And now, and I don't want to discount. I want you know because I know a lot of people that that follow you are into e-commerce and, and and things like that, and 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 building brands online. Yeah, that that that's all great stuff, and those are things that we do once we have a strong brand. So also Black Rifle Coffee, they're doing a great job online. They are do, you know, they have ads. They're they're bringing people into their funnel. That is all. They're awesome. doing all the technical stuff correct as well. Yes, but you do that when you when you have a brand and you do that well, that's when you get gas on the fire. That's when you see real explosive growth and that's when you see real success in business. So these things are linked. They are um, complementary. They're not at odds. And I would just say, that, hey, you get that stuff in line on your brand so that you can then really lean into all the marketing tactics and the execution and, and grow your business. 
and you're not wasting dollars, right? They know exactly who to advertise to. Exactly. There's probably not, I mean, their, their wasted marketing spend is probably like nil, right? They're probably always optimizing for that. Like who is our direct customer? We want to speak to them. They are speaking, you know, I bet you this brand alienates just as many people or more than it attracts. And that is awesome, you know, because they know exactly who they are and they are um, speaking to a very specific customer. And it's very clear that if you're not their customer, fine, go buy Starbucks. If go you're something Starbucks. to everybody, then you're, you're nothing. Correct. And it, it, I think they've done a good job of that. And it, it's good to have haters too. Exactly. All right, Mark, where can, uh, if people want to get in contact with you, or uh, obviously we covered Wild Story before, but any way for people to, that you prefer someone to get in contact with you if they want to? <laughs> I appreciate that, Corey. So yeah, wildstory.com is great. I've also created a resource page uh, where you can follow me on Insta. You can take a free health audit for your brand. We even have a, I even got a deal for an, a paid audit uh, that'll take you through those steps and we'll review those steps that I showed on the screen, a, a show special. Um, you can do that at wildstory.com slash good stuff. So if you want the good stuff, just go to wildstory.com slash good stuff. Uh, again, there's some free resources. You can follow me on social. You can, you can listen to my podcast, Baby Got Backstory. Everything's there. Uh, go ahead and follow me. I'm on Insta. I'm on a little break right now because uh, as you can see, it's uh, all this content creation is so time consuming and I'm a little yes, burned out. I'm learning I'm, that myself right now. I'm a little burned out and I'm trying to, to, to combat that, but there's a lot of great stuff there. Uh, and please, if, if you're watching this and you want to connect, look me up. Great, Mark. Thank you very much. Corey, this is awesome. Love it. Let's do it again.